Good morning. We'll start the, the meeting soon. Good morning. We'll be starting the meeting soon. I'm going to let a few people in the into the meeting from the waiting room. Well, good morning. My name is Mary Worthington, and I'm the Community Relations Manager for DCTA. Thank you for joining us today for our virtual town hall meeting. We're really excited about our public involvement program and our town hall meetings and the feedback that we hope to receive throughout these meetings. I have a few rules that I want to go over before we begin the meeting and uh, hope you all uh, will uh, join me in the spirit of a good public town hall meeting. First of all, I wanna let you all know that the meeting is being recorded. All participants will be in listen only mode. There are going to be two ways to ask questions today. Well, really there's gonna be two ways to ask questions today or you can email in your questions later if something comes up that you didn't think to ask. You can type your question in the chat or you can raise your hand. You can find this feature under participants and we're going to entertain and attempt to answer all questions after the presentation is made. So if you'll just bear with us and then we'll uh, get your question after the presentation. Also, we just ask that you please be respectful when asking questions. Any inappropriate comments may result in removal from the meeting. And then we have also posted our Title VI policy here at the bottom of this slide. And if you wanna learn more about Title VI as it relates to DCTA, you may do that through our website. I'm gonna introduce our presenter today, Pamela Burns. Pamela is the Director of Public Involvement and Communications for DCTA. And she will be presenting our public involvement presentation. And as I mentioned, we will then go to questions and answers for you. So at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to Pamela and Pamela, take it away. Thank you so much, Mary. Can y'all hear me okay? Yes, All right. yes. <laughs> Thank you. So good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for attending our first virtual town hall meeting regarding our service and fair plans. Uh, as Mary said, my name is Pamela Burns, and I'm the Director of Public Involvement and Communications here at DCTA. I am really excited to be speaking with you this morning. Uh, my goal for the next year is to really establish an ongoing dialogue with the community so that we can provide the best service to meet your needs. Again, this is the first in a series of virtual town halls and other community events where we're bringing information to the public and requesting feedback. So you'll see here a brief outline of what we'll be discussing today. We start with reviewing a timeline from the past year, highlighting the history of GoZone and our current connect fixed routes. 
We'll explain the comprehensive operations analysis at a high level and then review some information about our fixed routes and go zone services. We'll then go into some examples, <clears throat> excuse me, of different fare models being considered and explain each of them. And finally, we'll discuss the public involvement process and how to provide feedback. Next slide, please. So this is a brief history of where we have been with GoZone, dating back to January of 2021. Public involvement related to GoZone was held between April and June 2021, and the service was implemented in September. Additional changes to both GoZone and Connect occurred in both December 2021 and March 2022. Beginning this past fall, staff has been collecting and analyzing data related to both GoZone and Fixed Route to improve the services for our riders and the community. Next slide, please. A comprehensive operations analysis takes a look at our system as a whole. Information collected related to ridership across modes is analyzed in order to make changes that will improve our services. Both GoZone and Fixed Route are currently being analyzed. Additionally, staff is exploring different fare models and what their impact is on ridership. As this analysis is occurring, we're talking to the public and listening to what you have to say. At this time, DCTA does not have firm proposals to show. Rather, we are interested in listening to the public to understand how we can improve our services to best meet your needs. Next slide. So this slide shows our GoZone service area um, in both Denton and Louisville. Uh, the GoZone service, as previously mentioned, was launched in September 2021, and the area of Castle Hills was added in January of 2022. And I wanted to point out that the reason that GoZone was introduced was to um, enhance our network. You can see there some of the benefits of GoZone were to help improve our rider experience, enhance service delivery, and build DCTA service efficiency. Next slide, please. So as a result of the GoZone service introduction and some initial analysis of our network, certain changes were made to our Connect fixed route network. Service in Louisville was discontinued along with Route 1 in Denton. And those both occurred in December of 2021. Um, additional changes were made to the Denton service area um, in March 2022 with um, the redrawing of some of our fixed routes and some new routes being introduced. Thank you. So moving on to our potential fare models. Um, the first one that we wanna to bring to your attention is our flat fare model. And there are two different types of flat rates that may be considered. The first would be a fare that is the same across transportation modes. This means that a ride on GoZone would be the same as a ride on fixed route in terms of cost. Our current cost for GoZone is still at the promotional rate of 75 cents per ride compared to our fixed route price, which is $1.50. The second option would be a flat fare within modes. For example, all GoZone rides, regardless of time of day or distance, would be the same cost, just like our current uh, fixed route and train prices. Next slide. The second fare model that we wanted to discuss is a distance-based fare. This would be similar to how taxis or other shared ride services are currently priced. The further your trip, the higher your cost. Next slide. And our third and final potential fare model is a hybrid fare model. And this is really a combination of options one and two. This model would be used to encourage riders to utilize the service for the most efficient trip. So an example of this would be, if you take a go zone straight to work, that might be a far distance and take a lot of time that the go zone vehicle cannot be used for other shorter trips. The same trip to work could potentially be accessed through a combination of go zone and fixed route and or rail as well. This option where you're using multiple modes of transportation would be priced lower than the longer distance go zone trip. Next slide, please. 
the feedback that we're asking for through the public involvement process um, is a review of our services. So we're asking the public to take a look at the go zone boundaries and see if there are areas where um, service needs to be added. Uh, we're also asking um, for the public to talk to us about fixed route services, um, where areas might be missed, where what areas might be served well by a fixed route bus service. Uh, we're also exploring, you know, service days and hours. I mean, it could be that um, a fixed route bus might operate primarily during peak travel hours around um, employment uh, times of day. And we're also looking at a review of multimodal trips and how those might interact with each other. We're also asking the public for a review of our fare models. Um, as I said, there are three different models that we're currently considering. And we wanna hear from the public if those are easy to understand, how much a, a fair uh, pricing model might be. Um, and we're also looking at the impacts of those different fair models on our service. You're also welcome to just provide general feedback about our services, um, any concerns or additional questions. Um, we're always welcome to hear those from the public. And then we also have a survey uh, that we're asking participants to fill out. There is just a general survey where you can tell us your thoughts and concerns. And we also have a, a fare and service um, survey that goes into a little bit more detail about our go zone and our fixed route services along with our pricing. If you're interested in getting more information, requesting presentations, or having a one-on-one -on -one question and answer session, you can contact Mary Worthington at the email address listed below. It's mworthington at dcta.net. She will be re accepting requests through Friday, May 6th, and that should just give us enough time to schedule any of those conversations prior to the end of our public involvement period. Next slide. The best way to provide feedback to us is through our public involvement website, dctafeedback.net. On that site, you'll find an interactive map where you can drop a pinpoint and leave feedback related to specific locations. We also have an ideas wall that allows you to provide open-ended comments related to any of the topics presented today, as well as just general comments and feedback. And finally, as I mentioned, we have a survey that you can complete. Anyone completing the survey will be entered into a drawing for one of three $100 Amazon gift cards. A list of our upcoming public meetings and areas of the community where we will be present can also be found on this website. As previously mentioned, the public comment period is open until May 17th. However, I want you to know that this is a first step in our full public involvement process. Once this listening phase is complete, we will be reviewing the information and we'll come back to the public to let you know how we incorporated that feedback into our plans. And then in the future, we will also be going back out into the community more regularly to hear about your questions, concerns, ideas, and comments. Excellent. So at this time, um, I'm going to thank you for uh, your attention during this brief presentation. And I'm gonna turn it back over to Mary um, and we can open up the floor uh, for questions or any, any comments. Thank you, Pamela. So I'm, uh, I'm now ready to entertain any questions that you might have about what was just presented other questions about DCTA, and this is your opportunity as our stakeholders, our customers, to ask questions. Okay, so I see that we have several hands raised. All right, I'm starting my video now. Okay, so I see that we have several hands raised. So we have Devin and we have Christine. So, Devin, let me um, unmute you, and we'll get, we'll let you ask your question first. Okay, I okay. think I'm unmuted. Yes, you are. Hi, Devin. Okay. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Um, thank you for uh, for this meeting and the opportunity to share uh, feedback. So um, I guess I have used DCTA services for a long time as a UNT student and now employee. So 
Um, I live in Louisville, take the A train and go up to Denton to work on the UNT campus. So primarily I, um, you know, have used the um, connect route number seven um, and that has been very busy still with students and staff uh, on campus. So I definitely just a general comment would um, appreciate that if that kind of stayed there to to an opportunity for students. I know we're kind of talking about go zone, which I've had a lot of issues with in using a wheelchair. Um, I basically the biggest issue has just been availability. Uh, to be frank, there has been a lot of times where it's just not available. Um, I've kind of been keeping track in a note on my phone, and I don't know if it's just the time I am, you know, trying to take it in a busy time being, you know, going home from work. But, um, you know, there was a stretch of time. It's been a little better lately, where it was unavailable for, um, you know, like, I think it was like unavailable 11 times out of 13 which is not great, um, you know, and if the connector out wasn't there, I don't know what I would do. Um, and then as far as go zone to another concern I've had, and I don't know exactly how this would work, would just be, um, you know, as far as the pickup spots, um, I don't know how those are determined because I've been picked up like on an actual sidewalk in the middle of the UNT campus. And the driver was just like, I don't know if I'm able to um, be here, but this is where the app told me to go. So, um, you know, I don't even know if this is legal, but this is where the app told me to go. So, and then another concern was, is the safety equipment on the go zones. Um, some of the drivers are really good about it, but some of them don't exactly know how to use it. Um, and that's kind of a concern. So um, I kind of wanted to just summarize my concerns really quickly. Hopefully I did a good job with that. Um, but as far as the fair um, options, I, I kind of like one or two, the uh, the fixed one or um, now I can't remember them, but I liked one or two. I can't remember what number two was titled, but um, I like that one too. So that's my really quick comments. I hope those made sense. I tried to summarize them quickly. So thank you so much, Devin. Really appreciate that feedback and. That's uh, very helpful to us, and uh, you've you've presented your concerns and uh, appreciate your support for DCTA. Thank you for being a longtime writer, and uh, we certainly will uh, put your uh, your comments into our our report and analysis. Thank you. Anybody else have a question? Don't forget, you can type your, your question into the chat if you don't want to speak, um, and we'll address that. Okay. Christine, I know you had your hand raised. Did you want to, um, did you want to speak? I see. Oh, she sent a Google Doc. So, uh, anybody else want to speak? All right, Chris, Christine has her hand raised. Hi, sorry about that. I had my uh, laptop stolen out of my car recently, so I'm having to do this on my phone and the interface isn't too great. Um, so I don't know if I, can, if I can share presentations, but I did bring kind of a little slide deck there if you all want to open that with me. Um, so... Uh, um, just starting with the first slide, I apologize to anyone who isn't able to open this on their device, but um, I think it's just kind of important to ask why uh, buses are important. Um, and I'm, I'm speaking specifically as a Dentonite here, uh, top, talking about the Connect and Go Zone service in Denton. And I think that Denton kind of has a reputation as like a town that is cheap to live in and it's good for you know poorer families and good for artists. And I think that offering transportation that meets the needs of those people is essential to sort of the character of this town. Um, if this town wants to retain sort of that artist friendly vibe, that uh, vibe that is welcoming to people who may not have as much money, um, essentially we need transportation for those people. Um, it's also fiscally responsible. We're seeing some towns in the USA that are changing to different transportation models, um, specifically shifting away from a hub and spoke model to a grid.
you've cut out. We can't hear you. Um, oh, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, I guess my phone doesn't like it if I if I switch tabs. Um, but yeah, so Denton, what I was saying is that Denton is kind of a, it has a reputation for being a poor and an artist friendly town. Um, and I think that a lot of the people here love that vibe. We love that there is an arts community. We love that there are people who can afford to dedicate their lives to making our town beautiful and nice. And part of maintaining that is going to be keeping transportation options uh, for those people. Um, Additionally, um, we all know the environmental benefits of public transportation. And if you're taking public transportation and walking a little bit to a bus stop and getting out in your town and, you know, breathing fresh air, not inside your car, um, there's health benefits to that. So I think that uh, as we kind of look at what DCTA is and what it provides, we should keep that in mind. Um, moving on to the next slide. Um, I want, I have two pictures there. The first is of a route that I would be taking from my old uh, home. I used to rent on Concrete Jungle, as it's known, uh, on the west side of UNT. Um, and my roommate works over on 288. And so that's just a sample route taking DCTA. It's on a Saturday at 7 a.m. If my roommate had work at 8 a.m. on that Saturday, they actually would not be able to get there. That route if you look at it, um, it says that it's leaving at 7 a.m. and it says the closest time I can get there is at 10 a.m. Um, because there are no buses operating during that time. And then when I actually step onto a bus outside of my old apartment, um, it would take an hour door to door to go about three miles or 10 minutes by car. Um, and so the reason that that is, is that DCTA uses what's known as a um, hub and spoke model. We essentially have two hubs uh, of service. One is DCTA, one is um, UNT. And kind of the philosophy behind that model, it was a model that arose, I believe, in the 70s. And the idea is that you have hubs where people are likely to go. In most towns, it's the downtown. Um, here, because we're such a big college town, it's the DCTA and then uh, UNT. And the philosophy there is that it gets people uh, to the places that they're wanting to go. The catch is that we've discovered in recent research studies that only about one sixth of all trips um, taken uh, by car or by other methods are to commute. The rest of the trips are for people getting around, going to the park, going to the bar, to see friends, to go do their laundry and so on and so forth. Um, and even for some commutes that are sort of not what you might call a standard commute, such as my roommate who is not commuting to downtown, they're actually commuting to the other side of downtown. They have to take a bus that passes to downtown, wait 30 minutes at the DCTA transfer center, and then transfer onto a bus that's going. I think you cut out again. Sorry about that. Um, so the, what I was saying is that the hub and spoke model um, is very inefficient for people who are not taking like exactly as planned classic commute trips, which it turns out is the overwhelming majority of people. Um, so there is on the next slide, a comparison model. Um, this is what's known as grid-based networks. The idea is that you run routes that run as close as you can get it north-south and east-west. And you run those routes at high frequency, preferably 10 to 15 minutes, whereas DCTA uh, routes currently run anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour in most cases. Um, this allows for people to take at most two buses to get to where they're going because they have to take one that goes north-south and they have to take one that goes east-west. And that reduces route complexity uh, because you're not having all of those wiggly wobbly routes that you see in the DCTA right now. Um, and that decreasing can I, of... Can I, can I ask for your question? Uh, thank you so much for your uh, presentation, but do you have a question that you wanted to ask? My, my question is um, that I was wondering if DCTA would be interested in switching to a grid-based network, um, but I wanted to, before asking that question, contextualize what is a grid-based network, what are the advantages of, of a grid-based network, what's the network model that DCTA is currently using. Um, and so... Uh, um, I, I think that all of your, you know, your hard work and, and your presentation, um, you could bring that to our board meeting. 
and for public comment at the top of the board meeting. I also would really like you to put your uh, information on the dctafeedback.net site and the idea, uh, the idea wall. That This is a great place for all of your information and research. And um, wow, you, you also, I think, have some good transportation planning um, experience. And um, I, I, it's impressive. It's impressive that you've done this for a public meeting. So would you consider doing that? Would you consider uh, presenting at pu during public comment at our next board meeting, which is this Thursday? And also what putting time? it on the... I'm sorry? Uh, what time this Thursday? It is at 10 o'clock. A.M. or... Oh, A.M. A.M. Definitely. Yeah, my my concern is that my work schedule is wobbly at this time, so I, I just knew that this was like the one meeting I would definitively be able to make. I think you can present it. You can send it in, and it will be read at the board meeting, even if you cannot present. So someone will read your question, and and um, your your presentation will be shared with board members even if you cannot be there. And then the idea wall is a great place because everybody who goes to that website can see your idea and they can like it, they can dislike it, they can comment on it. So you'll get a very wide audience from going to dctafeedback.net. All right, excellent, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Are there any other questions today? For those of you that are participating, I do really want to encourage you to go to dctafeedback.net, go to the idea wall and share your ideas. Also take the survey for the opportunity to be entered in the drawing for the Amazon gift card. The survey also is, is more than an Amazon gift card. It allows us to analyze the fare models, GoZone, what our public and, and our customers are saying about our services. So that's dctafeedback.net, the idea wall, also the surveys. And share that too with your friends and your colleagues that are using the DCTA services. I see a question from uh, Devin. Are the presentation requests for groups? Devin, yes, uh, we can present to a group. Um, I'm happy to speak with individuals one-on-one -on -one, in person over the phone, through email. So if you've got a group that, that you would like a presentation for, please email me. Or if you just want to chat about DCTA services, we can dialogue about that over the phone or through email or face-to-face. -face. Okay, any more questions today regarding our proposed presentation or proposed changes, DCTA services. We will have other virtual town hall meetings. You can get those dates and times through the events tab on the dctafeedback.net. We also will be at the Denton Community Market this Saturday with the DCTA booth, come see us. We'll be giving out prizes and uh, hope, hope that we can interact and engage with you at the Denton Community Market this Saturday from nine to one. Okay, here's your last chance for any questions. If you have a question, for us at DCTA regarding the presentation. Okay, so I see a new, a new message. 
I work on the UNT campus in the disability office and many of our students use DCTA. We, we do work closely with the disability office and we'll be doing some training at the end of May for students, Devin, uh, that will be coming to UNT and are uh, working through that department. What's the timeline for rate changes from CJ? So CJ, the timeline for rate changes will take all the information once we close the public involvement period on May 17th. We'll make a presentation to the board in June. The, the board will consider the, the feedback, the analysis, and the rate changes would go into place in September. And, and that's all tentative, but that is the plan now. Okay, I'm not seeing any more questions. I don't see any hands raised. Last call. All right, I wanna thank everyone that attended our first virtual town hall meeting for our public involvement process and our comprehensive operational analysis presentation. Uh, you're very important to us at DCTA and to the mission of DCTA. We appreciate your time today and you can email me if you have any questions or you can contact us through the website dctafeedback.net. Again, please share that we are in a public involvement period. Ask your friends and colleagues to go to the website and don't forget to reach out to me if you'd like a presentation for your group or a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, with me directly. Thanks so much. Hope you have a great Monday.